When we think of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's children, we usually think first of Prince Charles, heir to the British throne, or the scandalous Prince Andrew. Then there is Princess Anne, the Queen's second child and only daughter, and finally Prince Edward, the Queen's youngest son, who for a time seemed like a younger brother with less royal responsibility than his older brother. But time changes the dynamic a bit, and Edward has certainly succeeded on his own in recent years. Edward actually seems to be the secret weapon of the royal family, and this status is largely due to his stable family life. Married to Sophie, Countess of Wessex, Edward is the only child of a British monarch who is not divorced, and his low-key status as husband and father of two has helped him connect with the British public. So, of course, it's no surprise that people are interested in the dynamic he and Sophie have together. Here's the truth about Prince Edward's marriage. Prince Edward and Sophie didn't have the original spark. Many people in solid marriages seem to agree when you know, you know. But for Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, their first meeting led to neither sparks nor butterflies. As the Express notes, their paths first crossed in 1987 when they met on Capitol Radio, and if that seems simple enough, let's explain. Sophie and Edward met through her friend, whom Edward was dating at the time. Yes, Sophie met the young prince when he was off the market, so there was nothing romantic between them for a while. It would be another six years before Edward and Sophie would meet again, and a lot had changed in the royal family at the time. From Prince Charles and Diana Spencer, to Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips, to Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, all the royal romances seemed to collapse in real time. Hugh Sophie and Edward, now both single, began a relationship in 1993 after seeing each other at a charity event. Although it was reportedly not love at first sight, as might be expected under the circumstances, the two would be in it for the long haul. Their romance almost didn't happen in the mid-1990s. Any relationship goes through rough patches that's the nature of things but Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, almost didn't make it. As the Express notes, the mid-1990s proved difficult for the couple, and they were allegedly dangerously close to breaking up just a year after their affair began. Ingrid Seward, a royal expert and author of Prince Edward, wrote that a series of quarrels began to affect the couple, and that by 1994 their relationship began to crumble. Like all couples, there were times when attempts to adjust led to quarrels and disagreements and in the summer of 1994 they were dangerously close to breaking up, Seward wrote. So what helped the couple get through the tough times? The solution, according to the Express, was partly due to Sophie's persistence. Seward noted that Edward had not only witnessed all his siblings suffer separation and divorce, but had also recovered from his own reputation as a bachelor. It was Sophie's dedication and willingness not to let the relationship flounder that got her and the prince through it. The queen did not have a remarkable first impression of Sophie. It is said that first impressions are everything, and when it came time for Sophie, Countess of Wessex, to dazzle Queen Elizabeth, let's just say she was reportedly a little confused. In her book Prince Edward, royal expert and author Ingrid Seward revealed that the Queen did not treat Sophie well because she reportedly thought that Prince Edward's love interest did not attract much attention, via Express. The Queen, wrapped in her majestic dignity, can be frighteningly overbearing in her disapproval, and her first assessment of Sophie was discouraging to the extreme, Seward wrote, including the monarch's initial comment about Sophie, you would not have noticed her in the crowd. Uh-huh. At the time, however, the Queen may not have realized that Sophie's sensible and restrained approach, as Seward described it, may have been the best thing for the royal family. At the time, Diana Spencer and Sarah Ferguson were in the headlines for less than flattering reasons, and over time the Queen began to treat Sophie very fondly. Seward even noted that if Elizabeth really wanted Edward to be romantically involved with someone else, as the Express noted, she would have made it impossible for him and Sophie to be together. 
Sophie reportedly pulled the prince out of his shell in the early days of their romance. Despite the difficulties, Sophie, Countess of Wessex, and Prince Edward continued to develop their relationship. This certainly seemed to be for the best, because their mutual friends agreed that the couple brought out the best in each other. It should be added that this was good not only for Sophie and Edward, but also for the royal family. Three marriages broke up around the same time. Stable love life. As for how they benefit from each other, friends concluded that the opposite personalities of Sophie and Edward only contributed to the development of their relationship, a dynamic that has been described in detail by authors Garth Gibbs and Sean Smith in their book Sophie's Kiss. Some people were surprised that two people like Sophie and Edward got along, but mutual friends found the pair to be mutually beneficial. Sophie is a fun, funny, attractive girl who most men would enjoy chatting with, one friend told the author. Edward is serious, quiet. But when Edward is with Sophie, he becomes fun, too. She makes an incredible impression on him. Prince Edward felt pressure to propose. Many partners can attest that when you've been in a romantic relationship with someone for a while, Questions about a proposal seem to gain popularity like wildfire. The same is true of members of the royal family, no matter how different the rest of their lives are from ours, and this is exactly the kind of pressure the press experienced from Prince Edward when it came to his relationship with Sophie, Countess of Wessex. As noted, members of the press asked Edward several times if he was going to ask the question, and it is clear that the scrutiny got to him. In a small outburst, he reportedly said, If you shut up and mind your own business and let me do it when I want to do it, it's much more likely to happen. If you're surprised that a member of the royal family can be so harsh in his words, let's keep looking at what Edward said during the exchange. He reportedly continued, The more people doubt it, the less likely it is that I just won't do it, via express. What helped Edward's grief over this? No doubt it was the lack of privacy that he and Sophie endured as part of their lives as members of the royal family. Prince Edward proposed to Sophie in 1999 and she enthusiastically accepted. Despite the pressure that Prince Edward had clearly felt on a regular basis, he finally asked Sophie, Countess of Wessex, to marry him in 1999. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, seriously, after three of their four child marriages had broken up, we can only imagine how happy the queen was with this personal victory. No details of the upcoming wedding were announced at the time of the engagement, but Edward and Sophie have expressed a desire to be married in St. George's Chapel. An official statement from Buckingham Palace revealed that Edward and Sophie had asked both sets of their parents for permission to get engaged during the Christmas holidays last year and they had tried to keep their engagement a secret until all the parents had given their consent. As for the ring? Edward got down on one knee with an Asprey Garrett engagement ring featuring three diamonds in a modern setting. We love to see that. Sophie has had a long period of adjustment to the royal life. If you consider yourself a connoisseur of the royal family or just a fan of all things British monarchy, then you know that royal engagements tend to come out of nowhere. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's engagement, for example, seemed to shock the world, given that the status of their romantic relationship was still so fresh in the public sphere. But for Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, their courtship and dating lasted about five years, and Sophie recalled that the time they spent made all the difference. I had five years to adjust. Sophie said of her experience. During the interview, Sophie could reflect on Harry and Meghan's life schedule compared to her own, and she admitted that the time spent actually being in a relationship with Edward and getting engaged with him made her adjusting to royal life much easier than Meghan and Harry's experience. Which clearly wasn't all that great since they left the royal family. During our six month engagement, I even lived at Buckingham Palace, Sophie shared. Not that you necessarily knew how it would turn out. They were married in a beautiful but simple royal ceremony. 
Royal weddings do seem like the social events of a year or even a decade, but Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, decided to go for a slightly watered-down version of events. Sure, their 1999 wedding was still a royal wedding, but it wasn't as lavish and opulent as, say, Prince Charles's wedding to Diana Spencer or Prince William's wedding to Kate Middleton. As Tatler notes, the couple's celebration was more of a joyous event than a blatantly formal event, although it still managed to garner about 200 million viewers worldwide. What else made it significantly different from other royal weddings? Well, there was no military or government involvement. As for Sophie's dress, because we know you want details, she chose a silk organza dress by designer Samantha Keswick. The simple but spectacular dress was adorned with 325,000 pearls and crystals, and she completed her bridal look with an anthemion tiara. Photos from the day show the happy couple accompanied by then-teenagers William and Prince Harry, as well as, of course, the Queen. The newlyweds got into hot water when a private conversation became public. Prince Edward and Sophie, Countess of Wessex, are definitely gaining in popularity, but you might be surprised to learn that they stumbled a bit in terms of public relations when they first got married. Their floundering was rather surprising, given that Sophie was co-owner of a public relations firm at the time, but nevertheless, the first few months of their marriage were not easy. The newlyweds first came under criticism when it was revealed that they had included a $99,270 tea set in their wedding registry. Luego, por supuesto, Esteban Lawson fames Sintas de Sophie, K. Aaron Conversations Grabadas en Secreto en los que participaban Sophie y su entonces socio Murray Harkin. Según The Guardian, Desde el supuesto consumo de drogas de Murray hasta la orientación sexual de Eduardo y supuestos negocios en marca para sacar prucho de su posición como miembro de la familia real. Para impura las cosas, Sophie reprendió a miembros de la familia real, desde el príncipe Carlos a Camila Parker Bowles, durante las conversaciones gravedas. Incluso Sanalo Sumer en Turs en su trabajo de Bido a las conexiones reales en general no es y bien. La pareja vivió la angustiosa experiencia de tener su primer hijo en el mundo. Puede que el príncipe Eduardo y Sofía, Condesa de Wessex, dirán algunos pasos en falso bastante importantes en los primeros meses de su matrimonio. Para to do el fervor y el juicio para siren desvenisers cuando la vida de Sofía y la del primer hijo de la pareja lego a su fin. La experiencia de Sofía con la primera hija de la pareja, Lady Louise Windsor, fue tan horrible que ha afectado a su vida desde entonces. Era noviembre de 2003, un MES antes del parto. Why to do Parisia IR Sobri Rudis N L Embarazzo de Sophie. Eduardo S. E. Embarco N Un Avian Rumbo a Mauricio Para Una Visita Real Official, Paro Apparent Mont Rutinaria. Paro Poco Despues de Su Partida, Sofia M. Pizzo a Sentir Dolores Abdominals. La Leverin a Un Hospital Cercano, Dondi La Situation M. Piero. Sophie sufrió un desprendimiento de placenta, por lo que es y lo practicó una cesaría de urgencia. La experiencia del parto la de Jo Margueta, según la amiga de la condesa. Fue extremadamente traumático y, en cierto modo, Sophie nunca es y recupera de ello. Tras el nacimiento de su segundo hijo. La Condesa y Sophie Comenzaron su vida como miembros de pleno derecho de la familia real. El Príncipe Eduardo y Sofía, Condesa de Wessex, dieron la bienvenida a su hija a pesar de las terribles circunstancias que rodaron su nacimiento. Cuando nació su hijo en 2007, la relación de Sofía y Eduardo S. E. Habia hecho más visible para el público. Para Sofía, este cambio supuso un cambio significativo en su vida. 
A diferencia de otras esposas casadas con miembros de la realeza, aparte de Meghan Markle, que era una actriz profesional de éxito, Sophie tenía una exitosa carrera profesional antes de legar a la firma, por lo que tuvo que cambiar su actitud anti lo que significaba. Ser una miembro de la realeza en activo. Tuve que rebajar mis expectativas sobre lo que realmente podía hacer, Dijo Sophie en 2020. Tuve que dar un paso atrás realmente grande y decker, de acuerdo, cuaren que sees el pastel, la persona que viene a agradecer a sus voluntarios y patrocinadores, no necesariamente de como implementar su plan de comunicación.